Of course, a little bit of an introduction now. I mean, it's episode eight, you should know who I am and what this is. <laughs> Lost in Ukraine, episode eight. So, my name is Haider Ali, uh, and this is my channel, Andy's Media. Uh, this is episode eight of Lost in Ukraine, where we go through what's been happening in Ukraine, my medical degree, and the whole shebang that just went down. I mean, I have been releasing videos, but using old footage that I've had from Ukraine. Uh, but this is going to be the first video that you will see of me face to face back in Birmingham since February, since I came back to England. Whistle stop tour of what's actually happened from my perspective, what's actually happened from everybody else's perspective, and a little summary of what's gonna be happening going forward. So let's start with a brief timeline. I got accepted back in oof, last year, July-ish, so July 2021, straight out of University of Birmingham. Got accepted into Dnipro Medical Institute in Ukraine, in Dnipro. Great time, loads of footage, great people, brilliant culture, learnt the language, eh, you know, still learning it. <laughs> Obviously spent a entire term there up to Christmas, did my exams, worked hard and had to unfortunately come back in February of 2022 because of... And now we're here going on six months after in August, almost September 2022. So yeah, let's talk about what actually happened, how everybody felt and what I went through myself um, in getting back to the UK uh, and then the immediate aftermath after that. So a lot of this will be similar to everybody else's experiences, not from just Dnipro, but a lot of the other um, cities and universities in Ukraine. And the general consensus was complete pandemonium, really. There was just nothing certain going on. Complete communication breakdown. I mean, everybody's main communication lines were WhatsApps, uh, and messages and telegrams from random people who are on the same trail, refugee trail, if essentially, heading back to one of the borders of Ukraine. In the initial stages, you know, we're talking, what, February 10th up to February 24th, a lot of people were getting mixed messages of essentially, should we leave, shouldn't we leave? But for me personally, it was the Putin message where he essentially said, we're going in to Ukraine uh, and he was he was visibly frustrated and obviously politicians they don't get frustrated they have to keep up the lies with the lack of emotion luckily for me I brought back a good 70% of my possessions well the most important stuff anyway uh, the biggest stuff I had to leave behind and this is the common theme for everybody else out there they left a lot of stuff behind um, but yeah you know it's just in the immediate aftermath, this is one of the points, a lot of people lost a lot of things. And yeah, a lot of conflicting information from the locals as well, because there didn't seem to be an era of panic from the locals. I mean, they had Putin on their back door, essentially, since 2014. I mean, they had Putin on their back door since forever, because Russia and Ukraine, yeah. From the Crimean crisis, they were on their back doorstep, saber rattling, essentially. Um, so they weren't too fussed, but I mean, a lot of the stuff coming from the Western audience was contributed to a lot of the fear going on. And I mean, parents and friends and family telling us all to come back was one of the uh, was one of the main contributors for us to come back as well. And I think if you look at it from a student perspective as well, uh, a lot of students couldn't afford to come back because if we take you know, students from Kharkiv Medical Institution or other cities, medical institutions, where they're not just from England, and we're talking about Canada, America, South Africa, India, where it costs a lot to go back. And a lot of these students aren't from particularly well-off families. And I mean, we have to, you know, give our thanks for what we do have. But these students can't go back on a whim because it will cost them quite a lot. And if it's uncertain, they have to make the choice of whether they do go back or whether they just sit tight. And that's 
one of the main factors that contributed to a lot of students being stuck in Ukraine. And nobody should be stuck in that sort of situation, picking between their own welfare uh, and what they have in their pockets. And it's just a sad and unfortunate situation, really. Let's talk about another thing. Big point, immediate aftermath. So everybody's returned to their home countries safely. What happens now? What are we doing? Are we in academic limbo? Do we continue online studies? What's going on? And yeah, that is the big question. Let's get into it. So, I mean, for my institution uh, and my university and a lot of the other universities as well, they will say, oh, yes, online studies, this, that and the other. But let me tell you this. The professors, obviously, of those institutions were moving to and from bomb shelters. Uh, and rightly so, because they've got to put their own lives um, ahead of themselves. And we had uh, professors leaving to pursue other academic responsibilities and jobs in countries such as Czech, Germany, or anywhere other than Ukraine, you know, for their own safety. And I perfectly don't blame them. But again, where does that leave our learning? And it just leaves us in limbo, really. And that's where the danger comes. So you see, at this stage, a lot of people become demoralized and desperate because their future isn't really clear. What do they do? I mean, do they get a job? Do they recoup the lost income taken by agencies or taken by other people? Or do they, you know, stick it out with the faltering medical education that they're getting? It's essentially student run because there is no support voice. There is no framework. What is going on? Everybody's in the same boat essentially i mean for my personal instance i was using lecturio and other youtube you know resources to supplement my learning in the general direction of the syllabus that we had uh but i mean as a medical student it's just not enough i mean you have to have that direction uh and groundedness to continue your studies but we didn't have that so you can try and supplement it with lecturio or youtube videos but medicine is not done you know online you have to be there you have to be in the practical classes doing it hands-on but it's it's unfortunate really i think one thing that i specifically told a lot of people to do is if you are going to try and recoup your losses um but to try and maintain some you know arrowhead in the medical career or a footprint towards the you know medical end goal is to jump into a medically related or clinically patient facing related role if you can um pharmacy you know or ward clerk or something along those lines but it's 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 not enough people are getting quite desperate you know people are applying left right and center for their own transcripts and um, this is a little separate issue that I'll talk about, but nothing's getting through. People are shouting into the dark and nothing's happening, really. So let's review what actual help was available to us as Ukrainian students and anyone really just caught up in the whole Ukrainian crisis. There was a lot of lectures given voluntarily by a lot of reputable professors and lecturers around the UK and a lot of students are very very grateful especially the upper years for these lectures as it allows them to continue their medical studies and allow them to keep their knowledge current but the major theme was a lot of students were expecting this conflict to end soon you know a lot of people were expecting the conflict to end maximum around about three months four months something along those lines but it doesn't seem to be slowing down anytime soon and people are losing faith in what they're doing obviously that wouldn't be the wisest decision based on my opinion because that is what i want to do and i'll be damned if i let that passion go anytime soon but but obviously that's just my view through one lens you have to look at it through different lenses of different people, different ages and especially different backgrounds, um, weighing up their own pros and cons of whether they can afford to continue chasing their dreams and chasing their passions. And again, it's really unfortunate and really sad that they have to do so. And you have to you know, look back and give thanks for the privilege that you do have. So, yeah, let's end on a more positive note. What have I been doing in the past six seven months 
Obviously, those of you that do know me, I like to make trouble for myself. <laughs> and by making trouble, I mean I don't like to sit idly by. I think someone else has described it as having too much drive for their own good, but we move. <laughs> So yeah, I mean, we're looking back during Ramadan, during May, April sort of time, I got in touch with a good friend uh, and long story short, I'm an archery instructor now. So uh, yeah, that's fun. Combat archery, trick shot archery. Yeah, I mean, if you're in the Birmingham area, it's a little shameless plug, but you know, go for it. I would recommend. Definitely one of the highlights for me has been uh, reconnecting with St. John's Ambulance. I'm an operational first aider with St. John's Ambulance and haven't been to many of their events since I've graduated back in 2021. Definitely one of my more favourite ones and the more recent ones is I've reconnected with Birmingham Youth Sports Association, so BYSA, and I'm a football coach. I think if you knew me before, I did have a passion for football and the world-renowned line holds its truth here more than ever in the sense of if you can't do, teach. And I mean, I play left back. I'm not particularly good at it, but you know, I do try. And yeah, I hopped on to the UEFA C licence. Just started that back about two weeks ago. One thing I did continue with especially when I started it back in Ukraine, is my Russian lessons. So I can speak Russian to sort of four out of 10 extent. And it's just something I enjoy really. In terms of next steps now, a lot of people are looking to transfer. And when I say the word transfer, people are looking to continue their level of study. So let's say year four, year five or year six, um, in a different uni without losing any progress some people are looking to start back from scratch really um, but other than that there's nothing much else to say other than that's all from me have a good one and I'll see you in the next one it's gonna be a good one I'll tell you that now